Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Well, y'all, I'm back. And let's finish up that wonderful scrap crafting series. Stay tuned. So I've been away for a few days. My camera was down, but you know what? I'm back now and I went ahead and purchased a backup camera so that if my camera goes down again, I'm good to go. So what we're going to do today is we're going to wrap up that scrap crafting series and we're going to wrap it up by just making some more chipboard pieces of ephemera using chipboard stickers and scrap pieces of paper. Then we're going to take these awesome little pieces of ephemera and use them in a couple of crafts. So in order to get my shape, I used this punch. And this punch is from Hobby Lobby. And as anyone who's visited Hobby Lobby knows, they have a large assortment of punches and you can usually get them at 40% off. And so guys, if you don't have a punch, you can actually cut these out by hand you can go online and print out some shapes so that you can use as the basis for your foundation. Or you don't have to have a background on these at all. I am just going to be using up some of my scrap chipboard. So I thought I would show you how I'm going to use my scrap chipboard for this. But you can also substitute cereal boxes, any lightweight chipboard piece that you might have that you want to mount your paper to, just to give you a little bit of firmness. So we're going to make a few of these cuties. So what I did was I had some scrap paper, so I went ahead and just ran that paper through my Xyron to get the adhesive on the back. So then I have a piece of scrap chipboard, and I am just going to take this and place it down just like that. And I'll go ahead and take another one and place it down and we'll make two pieces of ephemera. So then I'm just going to trim this out because it'll be easier to cut out if it's not connected to that whole big piece. So all I'm going to do guys is I'm going to go around the edge of this and I am just going to trim it out and I'm using a lightweight because it just makes it easier for trimming. But I have also used my medium weight to make chipboard ephemera as well. So like I said, get those mac and cheese boxes out, get those cereal boxes, whatever it is you might have, don't throw it away because you can use it, especially on a project like this because you don't have to have that medium weight chipboard for this. But if you have a lot of medium weight chipboard scraps, this is great for that. So I am just going to keep cutting this one out and I'll cut the other one out off camera because y'all don't need to see me do that one. All right, so we've got this one cut out. I'll cut out the other one and I'll be right back. All right guys, so now that I have the two cut out, I am going to use just a plain old emery board that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I am just going around and cleaning this up. And I'll do both of these. And then we're going to go back and just take away some of the color of the paper. So I am just using my emery board right now to smooth out where I made my cuts just to try to get it nice, even, and rounded. All right, so once we have our piece cut out the way you want it, what I'm going to do is I am just going to take my file and go over those edges and I am going to remove some of that color. And you might be able to see that my edges are starting to take on a white look. 
and I'll just go around and keep doing this until I have removed as much of that color as I want. Now I think I want just a little bit more on this. Not sure if you guys can see that, but it really does add to it. Now when I start out on this one, you can see that I haven't done that. But when I start taking off that edge color, you can see just what that does for this sweet little chipboard background piece. And we can look at this as really our canvas because we're going to build on this piece. So I am just going around. I'm going to take off some of that color. And then I'm going to be left with this. So now I have those two pieces and you can see how that looks. When I took off that color on the edges, it really helped to frame it. And I did the same thing on these two. I went around the edges and I took off that color. So now what I want to do is I am going to bring in my sticker sheet. And I am going to choose a sticker that I might want to put on here, but my sticker is not just going to be flat. I am going to take this one that says fall, sweet fall, place it right there, and then I'm just going to trim it out. So even when you make your lightweight chipboard base, don't throw away your scraps because you might be able to use them again in this craft. So I have my little piece here that I'm going to use and I haven't decided which one of those I want to use it on. And then I am going to use this owl. So I am going to take the owl find where he will fit and then I'll trim him out and we're also going to use him in our craft so I am going to have two pieces on each one of the chipboard that have dimension to them I'll be using pop squares and then I'm also mounting them to chipboard which gives them just a little bit of added dimension so we're going to trim this out. You don't have to be crazy neat, but I am trying to be just a little careful. But if I have a little bit of that chipboard showing, not going to stress, I'm going to let that be okay. So I am going to trim out right here. So now I have these two little pieces that I can work with. I am just going to take my file and very quickly go along those edges. You could actually cut out even more if you wanted, but this is going to be enough for me. So now what I'm going to do is just decide on which one do I want to place. And I think that I'm going to place that one on there and I'm going to place this one here. So now what I'm going to do is I am just going to trim away some more of my stickers as my base. So I'm gonna trim off just a little bit of that. Then I'm going to take this piece and just trim it down just a little because I don't want it as wide as it is. And then I'm going to take this piece and I am just going to place it. Let me stand this up so I can look at it. I am just going to place it right there, flip it over, and I am going to remove my excess. And now I'll be taking this piece and just placing it on there. But I want to add something else to this because I think it could use 
just a little something, not a whole lot. So I think what I want to do guys is I want to take that sweet little bird and pop him right there. But I have a piece of just natural raffia that I also want to use on this. So I am just going to take this piece, tie myself a little bow. So I have my little bow. So now we can start building this. So what I'm using, because I am out of my pop dots, so what I'm using, I'm actually using the foam mounting squares from the Dollar Tree. They work just as well as my pop dots. So I'm placing those on the back, and some of you probably use these as well. Um, sometimes we have to use what we have, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to take this and I am just going to turn it at a slight angle, just like that. And you can see that it's raised, which is the dimension that I wanted. So then I want to take my sweet little bird and I am going to take that bird and place it right there. Then I'm going to try to figure out where I want my little raffia bow. I'm going to place just a little bit of my reptile glue on the back and I think I'm going to take that and just put it on the tail of that bird. We're going to let that dry for just a moment and then we'll be back to see how this one looks. Alright guys, so now that we have our little raffia bow stuck, I am just going to trim off a little bit because I don't want all of that interfering with the cuteness of this. So you can see we have a third piece of sweet little ephemera that we can add to our growing collection. So now we're going to take Mr. Owl here and figure out what we want to do with him. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to take some of the autumn leaves from this one. And I am going to run those autumn leaves right along the bottom. And I'll use my finger blade just to come in and trim this off so we can remove that. And then we'll remove this side here. And I am going to save these little pieces because I can cut them up and use them on other projects. So now that we have our leaves going across the bottom, we can take our owl and mount him there. But of course I need something else on here. So I have this fall is fun sticker. So I am going to go ahead and place that down because it doesn't have to be dimensional. But then I am going to take another one of my pieces of mounting foam and I am going to use that to really pop this owl up just a little bit. And these are so quick and easy but they add so much to our projects and we don't have to go to the store and buy them. We can make them. So I am going to take my owl and just pop that owl right there. And the owl says that fall is fun. And how sweet is that? So we really are using our scraps, guys. We've used our scrap paper, scrap um, chipboard or cereal boxes, whatever you have. And then we're going to use just a few stickers to turn those scraps into workable pieces for our crafts. So the first thing that I want to show you is how I'm going to take one of those and turn it into a sweet card. So I have already cut out the card base for this one. I'll cut out another card base with you guys in just a minute. But I wanted to show you how we can take this and turn it into a beautiful autumn card. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to add a little bit of glue to the back. You could actually do this with pop dots if you wanted to. So I'm adding a little glue to the back. 
And the size of your card really is going to depend on the size of your embellishment piece. So I'll give you the measurements for this card that I'm making here, but those measurements are based on this background punch piece. But you can see just what a gorgeous, gorgeous card this actually makes. And then on the inside, I added um, the white writing paper and then just a sticker. So we are going to make the card base for this using some more scraps. So I am going to bring in my scrap pieces. And when I cut this out, this one measures six by four and a half. So let's measure this one to see if we have four and a half. We do. And we've got eight by four and a half. So since I have an eight and a half by four and a half inch piece of scrap, this scrap piece was six by four and a half. This is eight by four and a half. So I am just going to use it as it is so I don't have any leftover scrap. So I am just going to fold it in half. So I now have a four by four and a half inch card base. And this is um, what you would probably want to do if you want to avoid creating additional scrap. So then what I'm going to do guys is I am going to take my white mat and I am going to trim that a quarter of an inch smaller than the card. So I'll be trimming this at three and three quarters by four and a quarter. Because my card is four by four and a half, I have trimmed this one quarter of an inch smaller. So I trimmed it to three and three quarters by four and a quarter. Then I am going to take my green mat and I am going to trim that a quarter of an inch smaller than this one. So if I did three and three quarters, I will now do three and a half. And I did four and a quarter. So I'll now do four. So all I did was gradually decrease the size of my mat by one quarter of an inch. So we have this piece that is four by four and a half. This piece that is three and three quarters by four and a quarter. This piece that is three and a half by four. So all I need to do at this point is I need to take my tape and just mount some tape to the back. Take this piece and I am going to try to get it centered on this piece. Don't you love these autumn colors? I think green and copper, just so rich. And then I'm doing the same thing. So I'm taking my tape, mounting it to the white. Now I can take the white and I am going to mount it to the card base. And now you can see that we have a very sturdy, rich looking card base. And at this point, you simply need to find what it is that you want to put on the front of yours. And I think I am going to put this one on the front. So again, I'm going to take some glue, add some glue to the back. We'll take this piece and we'll get this stuck. And now we have two gorgeous autumn cards. Now I also want to do the inside. So I'm going to take some of my leftover scrap and just place it on the inside. I also had this strip left. So if this piece didn't fit, I would simply cut this scrap piece down to fit and it simply wouldn't cover as much of the inside as this does. But I wouldn't want to take a whole new piece of paper to create some writing space on the inside. I would simply work with what I have. So I do have this larger piece. So I am simply going to take my tape, again, placing some tape on this piece and I'm going to get it stuck down just like that. 
Then I'll bring my sticker sheet back in and I am just going to pick out a sticker to go on the inside. And there we have this gorgeous, gorgeous card that you can tuck down inside of a gift bag, inside of a gift box, or you can make just a whole box of cards. And that's just one of the ways that we can use the sweet ephemera pieces that we created. Okay, so we're going to make another project and this time we're going to make a non-traditional color for this autumn themed project. And I'm going to use some of my favorite black and white striped paper, but I wanted to show you how we don't always have to stay with autumn colors to get that autumn feeling on our project. So we're going to use our tags but we are also going to use what I would consider to be non-traditional um, paper for autumn. So I have my 12 by 12 inch piece here. So I am going to take my piece and I am going to score it at four and a half. Then I'll rotate it to the opposite end and score it at four and a half again. Then I'll turn it to the 12 inch side where I don't have any scores and I'm going to score it at three. Then let's rotate it to that opposite side of that three and score at three again. So then we're going to fold and burnish our scores. And guys, this is just going to give you another fun little holiday bag or any occasion bag that you can add to your growing collection so that when you're doing your crafting, you'll have some fun ways of presenting those. So now that we have all of our scores folded and burnished, we need to free up our center tabs. So we'll go up to the score mark and just drag straight down. Then we're going to angle in just a little And then we're going to reduce in size just a little. We'll rotate it to that opposite end. And we'll do the same thing, drag straight down. And then we're going to angle in. Let's remove these pieces. And then let's remove that. Now this is a non-chipboard bag. I will place a piece of chipboard in the bottom to stabilize it, but on the sides, I am not. So what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to take my glue, place glue on that tab, bring up one side, and when we join it, we want to make sure that we have it nice and flush on the bottom. Then I'll come over to the opposite end do the same thing. So I'll bring up that bottom. And I am going to come back in with my bone folder, get everything nice and smooth. Now this time what I'll do is I'm going to add my glue, but when I do my matching, I want to make sure that I match up starting at the top. So let's go ahead and place our glue on this. And then, like I said, let's match up at the top. Use that big old spatula, bone folder, whatever you have. Go on the inside and we'll get it stuck. And we'll do the same thing over here. Looks like I'm using a lot of glue, guys. I'm not, it's just a thin nozzle. So I will get that matched, making sure that the top is nice and even. Then I'll use that big old spatula, go on the inside and get that work down. Now, if you happen to have any of the overhang here, which I don't, but if you did, you could take your scissors and just go along that edge and it would trim away that overhang. So now that we have our sweet little bag, we can take this and just pinch it 
as far down as you want. And that gives you a really sweet little gift bag. All right, guys, so we are going to use some scrap to make our handle. I have already made one, and it's not going to be a 12 inch handle. And because I'm using scrap, this handle will actually be nine and a half inches long. So all I'm going to do is I am simply going to take my scrap paper and I am folding it into thirds the way that you guys typically see me do whenever I make a bag with handles. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to take my glue, place some glue right here in the middle. I'll fold over one section of that and because this paper has like a, it almost has like a coating on it, I have to keep working it to get that glue stuck. So then we apply glue to that third panel. We can fold this over and we can get it stuck. So then what I normally do is I am going to take this give it some curl with my big old spatula. I'll also run it along the edges of my desk because I do want that natural bend. So I have added some glue to the ends of this and all I need to do is take it and place it down inside of my bag wherever I want it. I'm just going to hold that until it sticks. I have my glue applied to the handle. I am going to take that handle, just put it down on my bag, just like that. Hold it until it catches. And now we have a really sweet little bag. And this is the front of my bag because my seams are here in the back. So I will make this the front of my gorgeous little bag. I am going to take this sticker that says fall. So I'm going to place that right there. And then I'm going to take my little owl and just take some glue and take my owl and just place him right there because my owl already says that fall is fun so I do want to get him stuck right there. And now we have this sweet, sweet little fall gift bag that we can make using just a regular 12 by 12 piece of paper, but then we can take our little chipboard embellishments that we made and add those to this bag to create something really, really fabulous. So I am going to bring my little cards back in so that y'all can see all of the goodness that we're able to make using just plain old pieces of scrap. And then in the case of our bag, we did use a whole sheet of 12 by 12 paper, but we use scraps for every other piece of this project right down to the handles of the bag. And like I said, even though these are not traditional fall colors, don't you guys think that with the fall embellishments on this black and white and the copper colored handles that it really pops. So guys, I hope that you have liked this fun, quick and easy way to be able to turn your scrap pieces into workable chipboard ephemera and then turn that chipboard ephemera into beautiful, beautiful cards, gift bags, gift tags, whatever it is you can imagine. So I hope that y'all have really enjoyed this scrap series and I hope that you've gotten plenty of ideas to be able to use those scraps to be able to use your six by six pieces of paper and to be able to take what is normally a non holiday themed color and incorporate it into your holiday themed crafting. So guys, 
I hope that you have liked this video. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys have a great day. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.